Why, hello there, beautiful people. Welcome to my review of the KSP2 science update that is, as of now, out. So before I get started, I want to begin by giving a massive thanks to Intercept Games for providing me with an early review copy of the update before it went public. I am very honored to be counted among the select few epic influencers who got the game early. I do not think I deserve it by looking at my view count and my upload schedule lately, but um, thank you nonetheless. Um, with that being said, however, I am going to open up this video with a quick disclaimer. So as some of you may know, life is unfortunately a thing that exists. And these last two weeks that uh, I've had the update, it's been on the eventful side. It started off with a very exciting set of final exams. Then some family I hadn't seen for a number of years came to visit for the last few days. That was quite enjoyable. And then if you throw in a quick five hour road trip in the middle of that, the result is unfortunately that I did not have time to really play the update as much as I really would have wanted to. So if you want a detailed explanation of all the new features and bug fixes and little knickknacks, caveats, details, stuff like that, that, that goofy eye doctor dude is, is probably your best bet over there. However, if you want to hear someone running off of one hour sleep ramble for the next however many minutes about this you know update or whatever then um strap yourself in and let's get going so the science update is the first thingy here on the ksp2 roadmap it's the update that adds as the name suggests science and not to brag or anything but i did kind of sort of predict this release date a few months ago Oh, hey everyone, it's uh, Piolet here from the editing booth, and I actually just went back and fact-checked myself, and I actually got it wrong. I said November of this year, so, um, pretend I didn't say that. Um, let's, let's continue. I mean, so, um, that's cool. But, anyway, you care about the update. Is KSP2 finally worth the $50? Well, maybe. If one disclaimer wasn't enough for you, here's another. I was never really the biggest fan of KSP-1 science mode or its career mode. I mean, it was fine, but I felt it wasn't very interesting or unique. It was pretty much just do this mission, collect science, unlock new things, repeat. For me, it's not really that exciting as building a craft, you know, that really pushes the limits of KSP-2. That's what really got me excited was like the, the engineering challenges of, you know, like build a giant SSTO or a working starship or a huge space station. Things that, you know, science mode isn't really conducive towards. So keep in mind as I talk about KSP-2 science update that those are my thoughts about the existence of science mode in general, or at least in KSP-1. All right, so very briefly before I give my thoughts, I am just going to do a quick run through of some of the new features so you just know what I'm talking about here. So, of course, the biggest thing is the ability to collect and use science. That's kind of, well, more like exploration as a name, but that's like, that's like kind of the, the, the whole thing. There, there are new parts and a beautiful new tech tree and this Michigan tool building and all sorts of stuff like that. Speaking of the tech tree, when I first booted up the game, I thought this was the whole thing, but like I realized it scrolls and like, wow, that's... That's a lot. One thing is for certain, you're, you're not get up. You're not gonna run out of things very quickly. In addition to the tech tree, they've also added, like I said, a mission control building, which fulfills a similar function as the missions in KS21's career mode. I feature, which I believe, may need a fact check on this, but I believe will not be in KSP2. So they've kind of combined them to kind of like a hybrid type thing, which I'm totally cool with. Like I said, not a huge fan of those modes. Also, they've added a bunch of these cool surface feature type things for people to explore, kind of scattered about the planets in, in interesting and unique locations. And finally, after months and months and months of waiting, heating. Oh my god, it's here, finally. And like I said, refer to some of my videos, and like I said, refer to videos from some of my fellow early access players if you want a detailed breakdown of all the new stuff. Because there's, there's stuff I'm not mentioning here, like, oh, they fixed wobbly rockets finally. Um, thank you. All right, so finally, what do I think? Let's, let's finally halfway through this video start giving some, giving some opinions here. Well, so there's good and there's bad. To start off with a major good, and I know this is not the doing of just this update, but rather a culmination of all the work done since the launch of Early Access, but I can finally say, after almost a year, that KSP2 actually performs quite well. 
gone are the days of 5 FPS off the pad, and oh my god, I cannot be more happy. And there also doesn't seem to be a lot of new bugs introduced in this update. There, there's a couple quirky things that I noticed here, like the Kerbal walking around and doing science on the same thing, but nothing close to the multitude of game-breaking bugs that were at the, the February launch. So that's always great to see. Let's take a little bit more refining this time around. So now on to the features. I'll start with entry heating, a feature that doesn't really have anything to do with science, but it's in the update, so I'll talk about it. Um, I mean, it's fine. I'm sure there's a lot going on behind the scenes that the devs are really proud of in terms of performance and optimization, but something like entry heating just isn't a super flashy feature on the player's side, to be honest. I can't think of many ways they could have done some like crazy revolutionary heating system that like blows my mind. It does the job, and it does it pretty well. And honestly, what more do you need? And I did really, by the way, like the sound design. It was mwah, beautiful. Next, the actual signs. Um, pretty good. As I said before, not personally the biggest fan of KSC1 science mode. I just, I, don't, I didn't find it very creative, and it gets repetitive, quite repetitive over time. I am... You know, happy to report that the KSP devs at least tried to solve the problem. You know, they add like these new surface features to kind of explore a little bit, kind of a little bit more variety in the type of experiments you do. And there's new missions and, you know, that's great. And the UI, something I will compliment, makes science much simpler and easy. Just boop, boop, press button, press button, send it over. It's, it's a lot a lot more simple and it, it, it gets a, it removes a lot of the repetition of this click here, click here, click, 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 click. Takes care of them in case you want and you have to store them and open up these boring gray menus. It's just nice to have like a quick little button that pops up and flashes when stuff are going. Just nice, mwah, nice and easy, no problem. And of course, this little transfer sound is awesome. They need to give this sound design guy a raise. He's, he's like, awesome. Other than that, I do enjoy the variety of new science parts added. There's a nice diversity of experiments to perform as I, as I kind of alluded to. And if we look over here at the progression, I'd say it's pretty solid. The missions are well designed and the tech tree is as good as a tech tree can really be. And again, 10 out of 10 sound design right here. So with all that said, what's the verdict? Um, it's fine. As someone who's 99% of my KST1 playtime was in sandbox mode, I was not really gripped by the science mode in KSP2. Is it better than KSP1 science? Definitely. Although it would be nice to have seen maybe a few more parts as, as in KSP1. But do I think I'm going to spend like the 20 hours working to finish the tech tree? Um, probably not. But that's probably more of a per personal preference thing here. I do think if you're the type of person who really gets invested in this type of progression, then I think you'll enjoy it quite a lot. I just find it a little boring. That, that also may be you know, the result of how much time I've spent in KSP. I mean, exploring Duna just isn't, isn't quite as exciting after your 500th trip there. Uh, this brings me to my next point. I think this update is very beginner friendly. Before, new players were just kind of thrown into the game without really any purpose or direction. Now, there is a clear progression that slowly introduces each aspect of the game one by one without overwhelming new players. I think here is someone who's never really played a Kerbal game, now could be a good time to give it a try. However, it is important to remember that this update really only brings KSP2 on par with the features of KSP1, and KSP1 has mods. So, is there as much to do in KSP2 now as there is in KSP1? Nope. Do I still plan on playing KSP1 a lot more than KSP2? Yep. But, it's a step in the right direction. If you watch some of my recent videos, you'll know that I've been pretty pessimistic about the future of KSP2. Of course, I would still like to see the development pace increase, but the fact that we finally have the first step of the roadmap checked off does feel pretty good. And if you look down the list here, Colonies is theoretically coming up next, which is when I think the game actually has the potential to really get good. So, with this update, I'm looking toward the future with a very cautious optimism, which is a far cry from the kind of nihilistic sentiment I felt a few months ago. But who knows what the future holds. All I know is that I really need to go take a nap right now.